offense. Dr. B from here with Dr. Moore and Mitzi and the rest of the team are just getting started on your right shoulder. We're looking in from the back to the front. Everything you see is magnified 30 or 40 times, 30 or 40 times on the screen. And we examined your shoulder before we started. You had, started, you had significant anterior instability, really no posterior instability on my exam. And uh, so now we're just getting started. You see two gray cannulas coming through a part of the shoulder that we call the rotator interval. Can you confirm, can you confirm the green lights on, Adam, on the mic? And um, that's how we organize our cannulas in the front. To the left of this gray cannula is uh, the biceps tendon here. As you look down at the biceps anchor, we can see that this is really torn and detached and that this labral tear extends from, see here's the damage from the dislocation, extends from down here in the front all the way up to involve the biceps anchor, which is what we talked about in the office. So we're going to get to work there. However, we're going to really start in the back of the shoulder and put in a, at least one stitch in the back to tighten up the posterior band of the inferior glenohumeral ligament. That will make more sense as I show you our progress doing that. We'll look at the rotator cuff just to confirm, and here's the rotator cuff above the, uh, the orange probe, and the cuff looks just fine. So the next step for us is going to be to um, lower gray. Is going to be to um, to uh, place our scope in the front of the shoulder and get. Okay, so we're looking from the front to the back now. We have this blue cannula coming in the back of the shoulder. You can see the damage in the, oh, you can see the, damage in the front as we look, and we'll uh, be working there a little bit later on this morning, but right now we're going to take a spinal needle, and we're going to check and find a good angle to place an anchor down into the bone. Basically right down like this. I think that's going to be a good angle, something just like that. We'll go ahead and go off on the video and show you some more in a minute. Okay, so here's our guide coming down. Okay, so this instrument is a guide. It's a little hard to see is through the guide we're drilling a little hole. And now that the hole's drilled, we'll take the anchor, and then after the anchor we'll take a mallet. Okay, and so now we'll unload the inserter. There you can see the two sutures coming off of the anchor. So we'll pull back to seat it, and that feels very solid. So the next step is we'll take a, a black handled rasp. It's got these little sharp points on it, we'll show you here. See like that? And so what this lets us do is it lets us roughen up this ligament, and this is really this band right along here is what we're going to try and tighten up. See right along here? It kind of inserts or blends into the labrum. This band, um, if we tighten it, it will help provide more stability to the shoulder. So that's why we do it. So here we're just gently, uh, we call it a braiding or roughening up or scuffing up the, uh, the capsular ligament here so it'll get sticky. And you know, Basically we're trying to make this a piece of Velcro so it'll stick together and heal. And now that we've done that, we'll go ahead and I'm going to need a grass work and a Okay, so now we're going to just pass one of the sutures. Let me see the uh, crochet hook actually. We're going to pass one of the sutures to the front. Not the crochet hook, I'm sorry. The little, yeah. Back on. Well, let me take the just for a second. Okay. So there we have it coming out the front. That looks good. And so the next step is to go ahead and um, take an instrument that we call a suture hook, which allows us to make a stitch in this posterior capsule. So the hook is basically like a curved needle. 
Inside the needle, it's loaded with a black wire like that. So we're going to start the we're going to start the hook right about here, and back into the capsule about here. in the back to tighten up. You can see how that's tightened up this part of the shoulder. Now we're going to work in the front because we've got plenty to do up here as you will see in a minute. Okay, so recording. So now we're looking down the front and we're using this same kind of rasp instrument to identify all the damage, but you can see it right here. This is all injured and detached and there's a little piece of bone. We talked about how we try and save those. much as we can, but that's a small piece. up and then we'll show you how we start to fix it. Okay, so we've got the first anchor down. You can see what's holding down that little fragment and it's tight. We're going to go ahead and place a second um, anchor, uh, straight's good, and uh, probably a third, and then we'll place another additional fourth anchor for the biceps or slap lesion injury. So here's our next guide coming down. We're going to try and get it down right about here. We'll show you some more in a minute. Okay, so we okay, so we placed the second anchor. Um, and we've got the suture positioned posterior. 
We're going to take our turn to the right suture book and get ready to make another stitch. So here's the hook. And if we can capture, you can see the ligament right there. You have a very robust, strong looking infraglenic humor ligament. We just need to try and reattach it to the bone here. That little piece that you see that keeps coming into the joint, we'll probably have to get rid of, but we'll decide that in a minute. Okay, so let's do another one. Recording? Okay, so we've tied the second suture and things are starting to come together nicely. I'm happy with the way it looks. We're going to place a third anchor. You can see the second one's right there. We're going to place a third one uh, basically right about here. So we've got three anchors and three sutures in the front. Some of the damage to the cartilage was kind of there before we got here, as they say. Here, as they say. So we can't really do much other than make sure there's nothing loose. And that actually looks pretty good from where we started. That looks pretty snug and tight. What you're seeing there is the third or the most superior knot. We still got the knot in the back. And now we're going to put the camera in the back and have a look at this biceps anchor and see what we need to do about this slap lesion. Okay, reporting. Okay, so here's what we're looking at now. There's the biceps. You can see how this is still detached. So we're going to see about placing our shaver right down here in front of the tendon. Hold the camera, please. And um, we might start through the other cannula, actually. And just see about roughening up some of this right here. This is articular cartilage. A lot of times we do this with a rasp also. Look back to the right, the shape. Here. I don't want to take too much of that down. I'm hoping that'll be snug down with our repair. Let me report. Okay, so there we're just having a look. There's the biceps. We freed up the cartilage down in this. Just let me rotate down for you. Down in this. Um, part of the shoulder. As you look down there, you can see the cartilage has been scraped off, so we have some area for the healing to occur. We're going to place a double-loaded anchor basically right in front of the biceps, real close to where we made that defect, actually. We'll go off on the video and show you some more in a minute. I'll take off the recording. Okay, so we've got our anchor down. Notice this anchor is a little bit different in that there's two suture pairs, black and white and blue and white stripes coming from the anchor, and um, I think we're going to go ahead and fix this a certain way here where we take out two of the sutures. Right here like that. show you some more in just a minute. So we're going to pass this right through the base and then once we have enough in, once we have enough in, just let it go, just let it go, so I can get it before I hold this up. Once we, once we have enough in, we're going to back out the hook and then we're going to take this grasper 
and retrieve this just like that. Okay. So now the next step, here you go, we're going to pass both of those sutures through the base of the biceps. And we'll show you some more in just a minute. Okay, so now we've got it organized. We're going to tie this blue and white suture back over here. We'll take our knot pusher and uh, determine which suture is our post, as we call it. We're making good time. It's been right at an hour. So I know I said 45 minutes to an hour, so it looks like it's going to be an hour. Because once we tie this suture, we're going to be done. And this will just take us a few minutes. This suture and the other one, I should say. So. Um, Figure an hour and 15 minutes, about us 15 minutes for me running my mouth so much because I know you're making a documentary for school. What we're doing here, we just pass this around this other suture to make sure there's no twists so that when we tie the knots, they lay flat. So this looks good. We've got this biceps anchor down. One of the ways we test it is just by tugging on it with our cannula. And that's not going anywhere. I'm going to put my shaver in and just do some fine tuning and some smoothing. But otherwise, I think we're done. I'm happy with what's um, come together here. You can see how tight it is in the back now and tight down the front. So we're going to finish up and get you back to the recovery room. Good luck to you now, Bye-bye.